Okay, so for in the in the first part of this video, I I repaired this large broken portion of the front fairing, and it's not a perfect repair by any means. Um, I used some fiberglass mat and resin, and um, I, I didn't do much explaining as to kind of the situation here. I may have explained a little bit about you know the accident that happened that caused this and everything. But these, I'm I'm usually I used I'm used to working on Honda Sprees and Honda C70 Passports, and the plastic that they use on the Sprees and the Passports is like more of like a nylon or a polypropylene or something, and it's very flexible, um, and it, it has its pros and cons. Since it's very flexible, it can warp easier, um, but it does not, it is not prone to breakage. This is some type of either, I'm thinking it's a styrene, I didn't look it up or anything, but it feels like some type of a polystyrene or maybe um, even a, some type of a white ABS plastic, which is much more rigid. It's not going to warp on you, but it's definitely going to crack and break. And I don't really like this as a material that, uh, that they use on scooters. Um, I think it's a styrene because it's so brittle. If it was an ABS, it would have a little bit more give. But see, there's supposed to be a tab right here, and that's completely broken off, and that's an alignment tab. And then all of these tabs up here are broken off, and these are what hold this front fairing to the front of the scooter. So anyway, I have to address that after I address making the front of this look pretty. So what I'm going to do is I have some sandpaper. Um, I'm going to tape off this sticker to try to save it, and then I'm going to sand down... Um, you know, where I did the body work and everything, and then I have some Bondo, and I'm gonna try to lightly Bondo the cracks and try to make them go away. And then once I feel like I've done a good enough job, I'm gonna repaint this whole um, fairing, and I'm all I'm using is this, this Rust-Oleum Candy Apple Red. Is candy Apple Red? No, just Apple Red. And, um, it does a really good job. It matches this paint almost perfectly. I actually painted right here uh, with that apple red paint. And uh, besides the texture issue, and that's just because I put it over gloss paint already so it bubbled up. But um, hopefully you can tell that there really is no discernible difference between the two colors. So I've never done anything like this before. That's my quick disclaimer. I don't know what I'm doing at all. I'm just kind of winging it. I've watched people online. I watch a lot of YouTube videos about bodywork and stuff. Um, and so I'm going to try my hand at it. This is a very low risk uh, type of situation because it's not like I'm going to make it look much worse than it already looks. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to actually install it onto the scooter and then work on it while it's on the scooter. Alright, well I'm not going to be working in this area as it is. After I fix all this over here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to scuff this down really good. And so I can paint over it. So this shouldn't really matter too much. Or I can... I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just try to smooth out these uh, cracks. Just using some... Uh, I think this is 150, maybe 220 sandpaper. I'm moving to a coarser grit because this isn't, uh, that wasn't going fast enough. Alright, you can see this is going to take some time, so I'm just going to turn off the camera and I'll come back when I feel like I'm close. Okay, so here I am so far. 
I've leveled out most of the areas where the repairs were made. I'm going to go over kind of the surrounding area a little bit more just to make sure I um, give the Bondo uh, something to hold on to, but I don't expect the Bondo to extend much past where the damage is. I'm going to have to scuff the whole fender anyway, so um, I'm just going to go ahead and scuff any of the shiny spots in this general area and then I will get to applying the Bondo. Alright, now that everything's scuffed up really good, I'm going to go ahead and clean it really well. And I'm probably going to have to apply the Bondo. I'm going to have to take it off of the scooter to get to apply the Bondo because I've got areas up in here that I won't be able to reach. So I'm going to give that a shot now. Well, I think that'll do it. don't really know what I'm doing here, but it looks pretty good. Hopefully I haven't given myself too much of a chore sanding that down. It appears the Bondo has hardened well enough, so I'm going to now um, probably take a 100 grit sandpaper and sand it back as far as I can and we'll see how well all the low spots were filled in. Okay, so as you may or may not be able to see, I've got this blocked down pretty good. Everything is very smooth. All the transitions are good. All except for right here, there's a little bit of... It's it's a little... Um, it's still broken, you know. And when I flip it over, I realize that the fiberglass, or the, yeah, the fiberglass repair didn't... Um, extend all the way to cover all the damage and so that is still able to move so I'm gonna have to reinforce that patch on the back and then I should be able to do just a very small amount of Bondo right in this area and um, finish that up but so far everything else is looking really good so I honestly can't remember where I left off um, I completed the there was a second bit of damage right here that I completed. I actually found a crack right in the nose that I should only have to repair from the back side. So right now what I'm doing is I've got some... <clears throat> I think this is 220. This might be 150. I'm not even sure anymore. But I'm, I'm sanding the sheen off of the whole fairing um, to promote adhesion of the primer. So I'm just doing the usual blocking style sanding pattern until I get <clears throat> most of the shine off of the paint. So you can see how it shines down here, but once we get up here, there's no shine at all. And that's what I'm shooting for. So this is going to take a lot of time and a lot of effort. And um, so once I'm done and ready to... Uh, prime it. I will bring you guys back. I also want to redo this. Uh, I need to mask the the sticker that's underneath here, the, the one that says Honda Elite E. I want to try to save that as well. 
Well, while I was sanding, a few other cracks have manifested themselves, so I figured I'd take care of them while I can. So right here in the nose, it's actually the beak, I guess you would call it. And around one of the underside arms there. And then right at the very peak, I just wasn't very uh, complete with the original repair that I did. And I guess that's fine, because that original pair, repair had to do a whole bunch of work, and so I can come back later now and just touch up, you know, like I touched up over here on that end, and now I had to touch up this end, just to try to keep the cracked pieces from moving, so once it's painted, you know, those cracks won't reform as soon as I'm done painting. Okay, so I did my final prep sanding with this uh, green, the scotch Bright pad. Um, if this all seems very uh, time-consuming and repetitive, you are correct. But I feel like it's necessary to get a good finish. I'm just working on properly taping off the emblem now. Um, so I'm going to work on that, and then once that's done, it's ready to be primed. Alright, got the first coat of primer on. Now this is just normal primer. Uh, it's stuff that's made, like, well, you know, they claim it bonds to plastic. I'm going to use it as my base coat. Um, I need to get my hands on some filler primer uh, to take care of some of these deeper scratches, hopefully. And um, I also see the... Uh, you might not, there you go, see how it's, the cracks are still kind of translating through. I probably could have used a second coat of Bondo, but that's okay. Um, I think filler primer and then maybe some uh, spot putty, all those things. I'm, you know, I'm learning as I go and uh, I see, I'm going to see what works, what doesn't work. This piece is kind of a uh, sacrificial, you know, it's just going onto a scooter. But uh, so far, you know, I'm pretty impressed. I'm pretty happy with the results of the bodywork. And hopefully, it shows. You know, the way the light kind of reflects off of it. It's pretty even all the way around. So, time will tell. This is after three coats of primer. I've pretty much eliminated all the small scratches from sanding. I just applied the uh, spot, you know, glazing or spot putty <clears throat> on the spots where the where the uh, cracks have kind of translated through the finish. So once uh, that dries, I'll sand that down and get this whole thing sanded down to maybe 400 grit to prepare it for the first coat of paint. Alright, I'm on my second coat of paint and the first coat didn't do too well. Um, here's a look at the paint can. It Something was up with that nozzle and I decided to push through it and the result is a whole lot of uh, orange peel. You can see that orange peel. So. I decided to put a second coat on and then I'm going to sand down the orange peel as best I can and then follow that up with a couple more coats. You know, we're shooting for that nice Honda red that you see there on that guy. Um, it's wet and so it will not be a, a really good representation, but I'll figure I get one of these panels here. Kind of go do a side by side comparison. So it'd be a better comparison if this panel was clean and if that paint was dry. But but we're we're getting really close to the the right color. So anyway, a little bit of a setback with that first coat of red paint. I'm a little disappointed. Uh, but but I have uh, still I still have pretty high hopes that it's going to turn out really nice. All right, I'm at the stage where I'm wet sanding everything right now. I'm using 500 grit for, for the moment. Um, so I'm trying to get it from this point here where you see the orange peel 
and let's see where am I it's getting closer here you can still anytime any spot where you can see you know the shiny stuff that's bad so it's gonna take some time right now all I've got is some 500 grit wrapped around a sanding sponge uh, I might move on to wrapping that around something firmer but for the time being it seems to be doing a pretty decent job I'm using a little bit of soapy water to to lubricate the uh, sanding process and once I get that all perfectly flat I'm probably going to go over with another coat of red and kind of see where I'm at at that point all right I just got done wet sanding this whole thing at 500 grit I think I figured out my mistake um, it's been in the mid 40s here uh, for the past week or so and I think that I just tried to spray this paint too cold and so it didn't lay down very well so tomorrow I, tonight I'm grabbing the paint taking it inside overnight and then tomorrow I'm gonna turn the heat on in my garage warm up the area really well and then I'll I'll put on another couple of coats and see how that goes hopefully it, it'll lay down a lot better the thing that was interesting is the primer laid down super flat it was just this gloss red paint that didn't do too well so this will be completely dry by tomorrow morning well and I'm not gonna paint tomorrow morning I'm gonna paint you know maybe later in the morning after this space warms up so that's the plan I'm all messy I gotta go wash myself up for the night so you can hear the heater in the background I actually warmed the paint up this morning and uh, turned on the heat in the garage and let me tell you it made all the difference so depending this is wet and so it seems pretty glossy depending on how it dries um, I may just stick with this coat or I may add a second coat I have not yet decided but it really turned out surprisingly well so I'm going to get out of here before I accidentally kick up some dust or bump into it or something and ruin the finish. And uh, I'll come back once it's dry. Oh, well, I think this is as good as it's going to get. And I'm pretty satisfied with the outcome. I'm not sure you'll be able to tell on video. But this is slightly lighter than this red. This has a little bit more orange to it than this does. This is very, very light candy apple red you can probably hear my son playing piano on the other side of the wall so the thing I wanted to do here is just I'm peeling off just this last little bit here of the masking that I did on the label or the emblem and as long as I don't peel the paint I should be good So I'm going to let this paint cure for a, at least 24 hours. It still feels a little, on the tape here, it feels a little rubbery. Um, but I'm really satisfied with it. And you know what's interesting? After all those coats, the crack has still translated through. But I'm not going to sweat it. So I'm going to button this all up. And uh, I think that does it for this video. I hope this was informative. I hope this gives you hope. I had no idea what I was doing, and I feel like uh, this was a great success. And so hopefully um, this helps you not be afraid to kind of experiment and practice and try things for yourself. So um, if you, if you like the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. You know, subscribe, do the notifications, bell, all that fun stuff. I do enjoy comments, so feel free to leave your comment below. Um, and I will see you guys next time.